even when the U.S. economy is humming along, it contains a strange paradox. Employers have a hard time finding workers, yet many workers have a hard time finding appropriate employment. This mismatch can be explained, in part at least, by the change in requirements in the labor market. For example, of 100 workers in 1950, only two needed a college degree. Today, it's almost 50. In 1950, only 10 needed prior work experience. Today, it is more than 70. As it turns out, many employers have started to demand a college degree, even if the job does not necessarily require one, in order to screen for general work maturity. They just can't seem to find a better indicator for promising employees. That might be fine if most people had a degree and the applicable experience. However, it may be surprising to hear that in the United States, out of every 109th graders, only 21 graduate from college within nine years. What sounds like an alarming statistic is actually nothing unusual for a healthy economy. College degree rates are similar all around the world. But as long as employers continue to screen applicants for a college degree, they're missing out on the vast majority of our national talent, critical positions go unfilled, and workers can't find good jobs. In addition, even degree holders may find it difficult to enter the workforce as they lack the experience many employers require. So what if there was an alternative path to filling these well-paying jobs? There is. It's called an apprenticeship. Some have come to call it college without debt. It's an ancient educational model still in use in the United States that combines classroom instruction with job training in the workplace. In the U.S., apprenticeship is actually widespread and very successful in the trades. And in recent years, we have seen it start to spread to other professions as well. Yet still, apprenticeships currently involve less than 1% of available jobs. What if we could scale this up and offer this education and career pathway to all students? In Switzerland, which has about the same rate of college graduation, 21 out of 100, nearly all the remaining students, 75 out of 100, go through apprenticeship programs. From bank tellers to computer technicians, from nurses to bus drivers, their education exactly matches what the job market needs. Similar numbers exist in other European countries. What would it take for apprenticeship to go mainstream in the US like it has elsewhere? Well, the Swiss start young, typically in the last two years of high school, and they don't expect schools to teach work. Apprentices learn academic skills in the academy, but learn job skills on the job. They follow a carefully balanced model that combines one to two days on campus with three to four days on the job each week. Employers stay directly involved in eliminating the skills gap. Apprentices also earn money while they learn. So instead of falling into debt, they can make a living and even start saving from day one. In addition, and this is another surprise, Swiss employers also earn money while apprentices learn. They have figured out how to train workers at no net cost to them, and in fact, at a substantial profit. This is because trainees, who work at low training wages, increase business productivity so much that they increase company profits, even while being paid for attending school and going to work. This win-win-win-win has turned Switzerland into one of the most resilient, innovative, and competitive economies in the world. Now imagine what the U.S. economy would look like if its apprenticeship investment were scaled up to this level. U.S. businesses would invest around $150 billion into their training and earn around $165 billion on that investment during the training period alone. Instead of its current 445,000 apprentices, the U.S. would have more than 6 million. Student debt would be reduced by almost 160 billion per year, and the youth unemployment rate would fall from a current 10 to 15 percent to 3 percent. The mismatch between what employers are looking for and what they find in the job market would be erased. Many of the ingredients that are needed to make such a future a reality are already present here in the U.S. And in places where employers, in collaboration with high schools and community colleges, have embraced professional-style apprenticeships, students and their parents have embraced them too. When the idea of college or nothing becomes college without debt, and students develop industry-valued professional skills as part of their education, we begin to solve the strange American paradox of both too many job openings and too many job seekers. And, best of all, we rediscover the depth of our national talents.